Hi, y'all. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I am Martha. I'm the Heritage Collection Manager for the Evelyn Lehman Culp Heritage Collection at the Napanee Center, where we are right now, and the Napanee Public Library. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about the Napanee Fire Department and doing my program called Napanee on Fire. Um, I thought it was really, um, be really cool if I did it from the host cart or by the host cart. Um, and I'll talk about that host cart in just a little bit. Um, I just want to say that I'm not an expert at all means. I just love to research and put these programs together of figuring out different things, um, about, uh, NACME history. And I just love sharing them with people. So we will get started. Let me share my screen here. There we go. So this is uh, actually the fire department prior to 1900 with one of the host carts that is still around today. So plea for a fire department. The first 18 years, Napanee had very little fire protection. In 1878, Napanee started to raise money for a fire company. They had a 4th of July celebration like never before. They had baseball, foot racing, climbing grease poles, catching grease pigs, and all the proceeds went to uh, benefit the fire department. In 1888, the Napanee News reported on the need for a fire department. A business owner took precautions by having large barrels placed on their roofs so that if a fire occurred, they could just go tap into the barrels and the water could um, extinguish the fire. And many thought that the whole village was just a fire trap because of the buildings being wood. So before the fire department, they had the bucket brigade. And this is how it would go. You, the person would run into the street crying, fire, there's a fire. And everyone would rush to the scene to get a bucket lined form. Some would race, for instance, for Napanee, to the corner hardware to ring the fire bell. Water came from whatever source was available, and the whole village, like I said, would show up with buckets and pails and create this line to put out the fire. So we have a fire company. Now what? By 1892, the town started sinking three deep wells and a building a waterworks. In June of 1892, there was two hose carts purchased, one being behind me, at $80 each. Um, a fun fact about the hose carts, they are actually still a part of the Napanee Fire Department. They have one and we have one to display in the museum. Each one is inscribed with the Napanee Fire Department. July 8, 1892, the two companies of 20 men each elected J.D. Coppice as their very first fire chief. The firemen were not paid, but they received a rebate on town taxes and poll tax. And it was decided on July 15, 1900, that the firemen would be paid handsomely. They would get $3 a year per man unless a 50 cent fine was imposed in each instance a member failed to answer a fire alarm. And at the same time, each company was reduced to uh, 12 men each. So here we have hose cart company Goodwill number one. So this is Goodwill number one. And um, this was one of the hose cart companies. There were two hose cart companies in the fire department. And um, like I said, this was one of them. And that is their fire uniform. 
And then next we have rescue number two, um, which is the one behind me. That is rescue. Um, so like I said, they would use these. I'll get into a little bit more about what uh, the hose carts were, but there is actually hoses on them. So one would be hooked into the fire hydrant and then you would race across um, to the fire with the hose cart pulling it along and unwinding that hose so that you could spray the water on the fire. Another hose cart company in Napanee was the Alerts. So it was organized by C.D. Volkman. He was one of the first people to move to Napanee when it was established. And um, the apparatus was actually his private property. So the, but the company was a part of the fire department. It eventually faded away by 1902. So other hose carts, Coppas Brothers and Zook actually had their own hose cart and it was primarily to be used at their factory and it was available for town, um, emergency town duty. But it was lost in a fire at Coppas, at the Coppas factory. And so Coppas decided to make a deal with the town board that if they would buy the alerts hose cart and in return, Volkman would use the uh, proceeds to buy a ladder, a hook and ladder truck. So hose cart races. Uh, I found this little instance in the um, in the Napanee newspaper. So it says July 19th, 1893, race horse. Yeah, raced host carts against Napanee, Freeman, Valparaiso, and a team from Ohio. So this is where they would actually race ho uh, host carts and have winners and things like that. And they had, it, these were really, really dangerous. You could get injured, you could be trampled, uh, run over by a host cart, anything like that. So the fire bell, whistle, and siren. The corner hardware, which was located on Main and Market Street, where Coppas, uh, or not Coppas, where Topping Dental is, um, was where the first fire bell was. A loud whistle on the pump house at the waterworks eventually replaced the bell, and the change from the bell to the whistle wasn't really a good one. Um, it aroused no one, and someone was thoughtful enough to tap the fire bell a few times and the companies responded in fashion. So one time, this one instance, here's the response. The alerts were manned only by a foreman. Number two was manned and taken out by two firemen and a townsman. And number one had disappeared. It had been taken out by a townsman and run down Lincoln Street to the fire rather than to the hydrant. Number one in the alerts had no wrenches, and the toolboxes were empty. Number two had one wrench in its box, but was never called for. And number one spun 300 feet of hose to get on the nozzle. The time was brief before water was thrown and the fire was out. When the auditorium was built and replaced the corner hardware in 1900, the old fire bell was replaced with a new and larger one. At the same time, four smaller ones were placed in each ward. Fire reporting by telephone started in 1908. And to clear the streets in 1926, the first electric siren was installed above the telephone exchange. The whistle from the Mutchler's plant, which can be seen here in the Napanee Center, was also used because many firemen uh, worked at Mutchler's. So in 1892 the, was the fire department's first fire. It was uh, the same year that they organized. It was the Napanee Furniture Company, and it was uh, said that there was $3,000 in damages. The waterworks was not completed yet, so the hydrants and mains were not finished. So they had to resort back to the bucket brigade. So the, new, the newly organized fire department was joined by citizens. And the Napanee News 
loved to make suggestions. So here's their suggestions about how the firemen's performances were. Um, or actually what uh, the townspeople had to provide for the fire department. That ladies would provide the firemen with a pail of hot coffee when there was a hard and prolonged work to do. It, it also said in the newspaper that it would prevent the men from looking for something stronger and others from hurting themselves by drinking cold water. In 1893, we saw the explosion at the waterworks. On June 25th, 1893, uh, the Napanee Pump House exploded with terrible force and the building was blown to atoms. Two men were killed and three were badly cut and bruised. The force was so great that store windows a block away were broken and bricks and timbers were thrown in all directions. To provide emergency water needs, a portable engine was rigged to one of the pump to one pump and a temporary pump house was thrown up. In July of 1893, a new waterworks and electric building was built. Uh, so in 1894 was the Coppice Factory fire. The origin of this is not known, uh, but they thought maybe it had been the electric lights. Um, the news, uh, like I said before, the new hose cart belonging to the Coppice Brothers was lost in the fire. So eventually hose carts became a thing of the past. The era of hose carts for Napanee ended in 1916 when the two hose cart companies sat down with the town board to raise funds to purchase a motorized fire vehicle. In 1919, the town board paid out $4,240 for a motorized job, and it was given a tryout by throwing water over the flour mill. Six years later, the uh, city purchased another one, and in 1947, they purchased a fire truck that was equipped for fighting fires in the countryside. Um, so money subscribed by the people in Locke, Union, Scott, and Jefferson Townships were used to purchase uh, the truck. So 1914, we saw the Lamb Factory fire, and this had been Napanee's largest fire in 20 years. Um, the blower near the engine room where the fire started, um, it spread so quickly to the finishing room and other parts of the factory that um, there was inflammable material on stock. The building was much a total loss, and when the fire department arrived, the plant was practically doomed. They planned to rebuild as soon as the weather permitted. So in 1937, we saw the fire of the auditorium. The fire originated in the Jet White grocery store, which was below the auditorium. The auditorium was on the second story. A barrel of kerosene exploded that sent the fire to the whole building instead of just the grocery store. There were calls for help to other cities were sent out, Bremen, Wakarusa, New Paris, and Elkhart, and the department from Warsaw headed to Napanee. But the department in, from Warsaw had trouble along the way, and they abandoned their truck to come to Napanee to assist in fighting the fire. Without their help, the entire block might have been lost. Burning boards of various sizes were carried to roofs of buildings, and the fire departments organized and sprayed the tops of roofs to keep them from starting on fire. The flames in the sky could be seen for many miles, and those who had not heard the announcement by ra radio hurried to Napanee because they thought that the entire town of Napanee was on fire. The Mullet's grocery store that was next to the Jet White was completely lost, and the records from the Jet White were saved, whereas the records from Mullet's was not. Many windows in surrounding businesses, along with roofs, had been damaged and broken, and all that was left on, of the auditorium building was the west and north walls, which you can see pictured here, but they were leaning to one side. A funny story that came out of uh, this fire, I mean, it's not really funny, but um, you'll chuckle a little bit. So, um, Evelyn and Fred Culp were married on, um, in January of 1937. 
the auditorium fire happened on January 17th, 1937. And Fred was a Smokey Stover. And he, um, him and Evelyn were actually on their honeymoon when the fire occurred. And many family members have joked and said that Fred never forgave Evelyn for missing out on this fire. So here's some pictures from our collection of the Church of God fire in 1954. Uh, in searching the uh, newspaper records and the fire records that we borrowed from the fire department to, cre uh, to research, we couldn't find really any information on this fire. But it's just very interesting to see the fire, uh, the fire uh, trucks and things like that. So 1962, there's the Napanee Milling Company fire. And this fire was in the cupola. And um, the Napanee's equipment could not reach it. So they had to call in the uh, Elkhart Fire Department. But due, the aerial truck was unavailable. And a call to Elkhart Township Department was confused, and they sent a tanker instead of a big ladder truck. So due to this miscommunication, um, the Napanee Fire Department reached the blaze with a system of ladders on the roof, and they were actually throwing buckets of water um, onto the fire. During the fire, the upper platform of the chute burned through, and the 20-horsepower motor crashed to the floor. Uh, that tore out a part of the built-in sprinkler system, but the lower portion continued uh, to assist in putting out the fire. And this fire lasted for four hours. In 1966, we saw the Tam Corp fire. This was a mobile home factory and nine mobile homes in various stages of production were lost in the fire. So we're going to shift gears and we'll get back to the fires in a little bit. Um, but Napney is no, the Napney Fire Department is known as the Smoky Stovers. So in May of 1962, Fire Chief Willard Naylor asked Napney's very own Bill Holman if he could use the cartoon Smoky Stover for the Napney Fire Department. Bill wrote back and said, you can use it however you want. And, um, so after that, Smokey became the mascot of the Napanee Fire Department, and they're known as the Napanee Smokey Stovers. They are the only ones in the country to be able to use Smokey Stover as their mascot. And I learned this just a couple years ago, that each fire engine has a different design of Smokey Stover on it. So next we have the Amish Acres fire that happened in 1977. So January 31st of 1977, the Amish Acres original restaurant burned to the ground. The fire was set, um, it was actually an act of arson as to be as a diversion. The purpose was to get the police on the west side of town. So at the closing of two drug stores on the east side of town, uh, the plan was to rob the drug stores of their cash and soft drugs, which could be converted into hard drugs for their own use. Several feet of snow and extremely cold temperatures hampered the firefighting efforts. The first major truck to arrive was stuck in the snow and before it got to the scene, although the building was not protected by a sprinkler system. Direct alarms had trucks with sirens and red lights arriving at the scene before the criminals were out of the building. Uh, following setting the fire, the, confu the two confused accomplices involved themselves in a several acts of comedy. Upon getting stuck in the parking lot uh, during the attempted getaway, the one was pushed, uh, pushed the driver out and was left to his own devices. The stranded man asked the police for a ride uptown because his car was broken down on County Road 52. The police gave him a lift, and he wandered around town looking for a payphone to find his buddy. There was no phone to be found, and so he wandered into the police station and asked the rookie cop holding down the station to use the phone. The rookie noticed a switchback knife in his pocket and proceeded to frisk him and found a blank 
prescription papers in his possession that had been taken from a medical clinic in Goshen, which had been burned the night before to cover the drug robbery that took place. Um, so yeah, they, they really didn't get away with it. In 1982, we saw the burning, um, the loss of Napanee's original uh, depot. The depot was located a mile and a half outside of town when the new depot was built and it was used as a shed. Napanee, Walker, Issa, Bremen, and Four Acre all fought the blaze and the Napanee EMS was also on the scene to treat three firemen for their injur injuries. Cecile Fitzgerald for a burn on his right hand Rod Stump for a cut on his left thumb, and Chief Hartman for a cut on his left center finger. 25 men and five fire trucks remained at the scene for over two hours. So you have the Foo Car also to talk about, and it was inspired by the Smokey Stover uh, cartoon. And there are, um, it was created by a man in Francisville, Indiana where the first original food car still is in existence. And there were 50 kits created because the food car was a kit car. The, there are only no, uh, about four um, known in existence, but we're always trying to find more. Um, the Napanee Fire Department was acquired in the 1990s and it was used in parades and towed many children in bucket cars or barrel cars. It, its current residence is in the Napanee Center and it's actually behind me. You probably can't, um, you probably can't see it or anything like that. Um, but the hose car and the car both reside here and they're, you know, in line of each other. So we're getting more into modern uh, fires. So we have in 2007, we have the Mary's Pastries Fire, which it was a total loss and a call went out at approximately 9.30 p.m. And by 2 a.m. they thought the fire, they thought that the fire was out. They received another car, call about a half an hour later that it had rekindled. And the fire was difficult to control because of the metal roof and ceiling. And they did have plans to rebuild, but it never happened. In 2008, there was the Fairchild building fire. This was an arson, and there was two gentlemen who were arrested, and the entire building was lost. Um, the temperatures were so cold that the water in the hoses was freezing, and uh, Main Street turned into a virtual skating rink. So these are some random fires from um, the uh, logbooks, I want to say, from the Napanee Fire Department and also from the Napanee, um, and the Napanee News. So in 1899, there were some boys who lit a match to search for something under a couch and they lit the piece of furniture on fire. In 1896, they, uh, you can see that the department responded quickly to something and the coppice cart had joined in and many thought that the entire block was going to burn down. Also in 1896, there was a fire in the post office building, um, not our current post office building, but um, where the post office had uh, last resided. So the fire started in a spittoon via sawdust, and um, the rear room of that was occupied by the architect Frazier, and there had been no damage. So I couldn't imagine if he would have lost all of his architect papers. Um, in 1881, PC Staley's shop caught fire in the upper room, and quick to arrive were a hundred men or more. Um, each prepared to start the flames with no and no materials were lost. In 1935, um, a Ford car started on fire because there was a leak in the carburetor. 
1982, the Shamrock Cafe was a total loss in being burnt down. In 1981, the Westside Pavilion Park fired. It was caused by faulty electrical condition or connections, and the damage was confined mostly to the roof and ceiling. Oh, and also, in 1954, they used to insert pennies in the fuse boxes, and um, so pennies stuck into a fuse box where the blame were blamed by firemen for a fire on Sunday, and or, so this fire had happened on a Sunday. The fire was in the wall, and the fire department was quick and located it and extinguished it. So today's fire department includes two stations, uh, 22 to 24 dedicated volunteer members, 12 pieces of apparatus, this might have changed, um, 174 calls in 2006 and 176 in 2007. So thank you so, so much for joining me tonight on Zoom. And if you have any questions, you can always email, oops, you can always email Napney History at napneylibrary.org. Um, and this was recorded, so it'll be on Zoom for you to replay and rewatch. So have a great evening.